Let's just get down. Alrighty, everybody. Hope you guys are all doing okay. Let me turn on the volume on my end over here. All right. Hope you guys all had a good weekend. Before we get started with all the Bitcoin stuff going on, I know we're having a tough day, but we saw this coming, right? Um, but the big thing here is uh, today, YouTube did finally fix my channel. It took a lot of work, and I do want to like thank all of you guys who retweeted and everything. Um, they admitted it was a mistake and that it's hard for them to manage so many different uh, accounts on YouTube. And I kind of accepted that because I didn't want to really do much. You know, I don't want to argue with them over it. So um, I understand it now. I'm happy they fixed the mistake. I'm happy everything's going back no to normal. So all of you guys should have your badges back. And if for whatever reason you canceled your membership because you weren't sure if they're going to charge or not, you can bring it back on. That's if you want to, of course. But all the YouTube stuff is fixed. Thank God. Now we can finally move on from this debacle. It took like a good two weeks of me just pounding and pounding and pounding along with you guys' help. Along with, uh, you know, Rob who owns Digital Asset News. Uh, his his YouTube channel has like over a couple hundred thousand subscribers. So I do want to thank Rob for helping me out there. Uh, I'm going to send him an email later on in the day um, telling him about the good news. So uh, that'll be good to know. But yeah, Rob's usually a pretty uh, busy individual. <coughs> Excuse me. My dog just got in my lap here very fast to get some free pets. Um, but yeah, guys, let, let's talk about Bitcoin because right now those we are hitting some support. Uh, before that happens, Loki, get, this is what I'm dealing with. Yeah, dealing with that little guy. Um, yeah, go go play. You have food and you have stuff. Go play. Go go play. Go play. Yeah, come on. Go play. There you go. Good boy. Good boy. Um, but um, I wasn't able to stream yesterday. Yesterday I was, bro. Give you a little question those. Uh, yesterday, I took my mom and sister out for my mother's my birth my mother's birthday. Excuse me. We went out and got some great sushi. Sorry, last thing before we head into Bitcoin here. Um, but look at that. Got some sashimi. Uh, we had some uh, whatever you call it in the back. You can see it there. Uh, tempura, but we ate through it really fast. We got some sushi. Uh, we got some more sushi, and then we had like two more plates of sushi. We took a lot of it home, and then uh, my mom got a free little ice cream thing with a strawberry on top of it. It was really chill night. Um, and they even let us bring her wheelchair in there, which is really nice. Um, so her birthday was a success. It's so much of a success. She doesn't want me to buy her a, uh, an actual birthday present because she thinks the dinner was such a good thing. But I'm going to head over to, um, uh, there's a beauty place called Sephora and I'm going to get her some makeup and stuff that she's really been wanting. Uh, like, you know, the facial creams and stuff. Um, but her birthday was glad and, uh, uh I told a lot of you guys said happy birthday to her. So she was happy about that as well. Okay. So let's start off with a kind of a blank Bitcoin chart here before we start going into the Ichimoku clouds and the Fibonacci levels and everything like that, okay? So we did not hold the 20-week moving average. Not a good sign at all. Not a good sign at all. 
One of the things we've been talking about here uh, since like last week and even a few weeks before, well, no, months actually at this point, these death crosses on the weekly to the 50 are really bad news for crypto. Although I did not foresee this big pump coming up, even though we are back down here, I did not see this pump coming up. Um, but basically every time we do have these death crosses here between the 20 and the 50 moving average, just kind of doing a recap here, guys. We tend to break down and hit these 200 uh, moving average weekly, um, 200 weekly moving average, um, uh, moving average, excuse me. We happen right here on this death cross. We hit it pretty fast and hard. I don't think it's going to be that fast. At least I don't hope it is. I hope I don't hope it isn't. And then we had one over here as well, which really led to a whole bunch of nothing until one day we just ultimately uh, plummeted down to that 200 weekly moving average here. Uh, something similar that I have been watching lately is, you know, we broke above the 200 or the, 50, the 20 moving average right here, and then immediately came back down. Something like that just happened recently. But it's rare that we break out above the 20 week moving average and not go up. So these are the two examples right here: break out above it, come back down; break out above it, come back down. But if you look at more recent history, uh, you know, it's what since 2019, if it breaks above it, we have a move. Uh, broke above it, we had a move. Broke out above it, had a move, and up and up and up we went right. Broke above it here, had a move. So it's rare that after we break out above this, we did not, um, we were not able to hold. It's rare, all right? So that's kind of a thing in itself to just be careful. There is a lack of buyers in the market right now. You're seeing this in the stock market as well. Stock market as well, okay? Now, on the daily candles, what we were talking about over the last few days, this goes back into the basic technical analysis that we've talked about. And I will um, kind of guide you guys in something because I think some people may have fallen into this trap here that we were talking about um, on Friday. <clears throat> So here we go, guys. We broke down this day. When it breaks down, this is when I told you guys, hey, I'm selling off some of my shares. I opened up a short this day, and I'm just going to ride it out. I have since closed my short because we hit a Fibonacci level, and that's that was the, my, my price target there. But um, So we broke down, okay? But let me go over here to the 15-minute chart because I think it's important that you guys watch one of my videos as I explain it later on. We broke down. We came down here a little bit, right? But then we consolidated, and then people started having faith that we might go back up, all right? And this is a common trap um, where we bring it back up here, and then ultimately we get shorted back down. Uh, I have a video. It's I, I need to make a better thumbnail. That's probably what it, what it is. But uh, I, I talk about ascending triangles, what is it, and how to trade it. It only has like 300 views because it's a very, very dry topic, of course. But one of the things I talk about here is, if I can find the exact thing, um, let me find it. I'll break down. Okay, you'll you'll see when I when I have this shape on here. You're I'm not gonna play me talking about it, but you'll see how it comes down, then it comes up, and then it comes down hard, right? So instead of just coming down like that, so sometimes what I was explaining this video is you can open up a position right here, um, and then you know if uh, like half a position or a full position, be okay with it losing money for a little bit before ultimately coming back down. That's what my strategy was. Or what you can do is you can buy us uh, at a 50% right here, and if it does come back up, you can double down on it and then hope for the hope that it continues to come down because it is a very scary thing whether you buy here or here, knowing that you're buying on the up, the uptrend right here because you know I might go up here or I might just go down. That's why you're taking this initial position, but up here that's where you can really strike and make some good profits. And you saw that um, pretty 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 well on this chart right here. It even went above the trend line, right? But if you go to the day of the candle, which is the most important, it wouldn't have closed above that. So if I go to right here, you'll see that on this little spike we had, we, we broke out above it, but we did not close above it. If we broke, if we closed above it, that might have meant something completely different, but of course we didn't. Um, and then going back to the, the mantra that we always talk about here, whenever we break down or above a moving average, we tend to have longer candles. And what did I say before? Longer candle, longer candle, longer, 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 and longer. And what do we have here? A longer candle today. Now, the good news right now is we have hit a nice level of support. Uh, I sold my positions. I haven't bought anything just yet, but if you guys want to start taking nibbles in here, definitely go for it. Uh, it might it might give you a, a, a short-term rebound here. I, I'm assuming more of a short-term rebound because we just started the breakdown off of this trend line, okay? Now, one of the things to look for here is... If I can get this to work properly. I increased the sensitivity of my mouse and I'm getting used to it still. Uh, there you go. All right. So we broke down, I had the Fibonacci level right here and I think I actually need to change this over to, is that it? I messed up something, but not sure what. Oh, yeah, that, that would be it. All 
I wonder if it was different because it was a USD chart. Oh, that's fine. But basically, on one of my charts, we hit the Fibonacci level, and that's what I was most concerned about. Give me a second here. I know I know what I saw earlier, but I hate taking the extra time to uh, do it. There we go. Sorry. Okay. Different wrong point, but there you go. I have a lot of Fibonacci levels on my charts, and I use different <laughs> different ones for different types of trading. That was more of a, 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 a day trading Fibonacci level because it's more short term here. Uh, longer term one, you can see we tapped right on it there. Right on it. Um, I felt like a fool for a second. I was like, what the heck is going on here? But we tapped on it, and you know what? This was a good drop down. I made a good amount of profit. I told you guys I opened up, uh, I told you guys on Friday when I did this, I opened up a 125x short position. It gave me some good uh, returns there. I had another 125 short position. That one actually got liquidated because I did not have enough money in that account on KuCoin or in the futures account on KuCoin, I would say. And so when it did have that little spike, I got, I got like shut out of it basically, which sucked. And then I had the other one, my more traditional larger uh, investment short. Um, and that one was a 20x leverage position. And that one actually ended up doing pretty well as well uh, here too. Um, so all, by and all, the majority of my shorts worked out here. Um, I, I, I know a lot of you guys were questioning why I was shorting on Friday because of um, because it looks like it was kind of stabilizing a little bit here. Um, but it definitely was a was a swing trade worth uh, worth having there, especially because of the the 50 day moving average. Uh, I thought we might get attacked by the shorts, just like how when we were up here. One of my fears was that the 20 is moving up really fast. So if the 20 gets it too close, you will see shorts try to bring us down below that level. And of course they did here, but we were really hoping that since we broke out above that 20 week moving average, that was gonna be the catalyst to bring us up towards 52,000 before you might've been expecting more of a pullback going forward because the $52,000 range was more of the shoulder, you know, all the way up here at the shoulder range of these uh, head and shoulder play right here. That was really that level of resistance around 52,000 that we, we thought we might get up to. Not even close, unfortunately. Now, since we have broken down below this trend line going forward here, guys, the next one we really have to worry about is way down here, which means theoretically over the next, let's say, two, three weeks, Bitcoin will most likely, we'll see what happens if we break down below this Fibonacci level, but last time we just paused also, then we moved down, but we might be heading back down towards $38,000 or so, and again, this is a weekly candle, so we have six more days, so we could easily go back up a little bit before coming back down, so just keep that, um, keep that um, you know, in the back of your mind, um, but if I were to go back over here, let me see, what is this, February, if I can go to a 15-minute chart, maybe that'll work out, yeah. Let me go to the daily chart actually here first. So you see right here, we stop for a day after a big drop, then we started coming down, and then, there, then we finish off. This one, we actually just came straight down. Uh, this one came straight down off the Fibonacci levels. Oh, this is also because we had moving averages though here too, which complicates it. But let's go over to the 15 moving average. You see how we're kind of just gliding over it at the moment? Gliding. Um, I think they're going to see a lot of people actually buy right now and just do a short-term um, day trade where they're trying to actually just break out above the 20 moving average on the 15-minute chart and most likely just try to go from about, let's say, 40,400 here to about, you know, 41,000 tops. Nice little quick day trade. I think that's what you're going to see people try to do here. Whether it works out or not, we'll see. There's a lot of fear in the market. And, of course, the stock market is not doing any better <laughs> right now. It is, uh, you know, the thing I saw good today it was AT&T. Uh, banks are kind of unch at the moment, but Microsoft's down, everything's down here so far. Um, and um, Twitter, Elon Musk isn't going on the board of Twitter, which is going to be some crazy news there. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens, but I'm kind of happy he's not going to be on the board, to be frank. I thought, I didn't realize how many restrictions were on board members about what they can tweet about. And so I think he may try to do a hostile takeover of Twitter, which would be fantastic. So uh, because of that, uh, I haven't really sold many of my uh, Twitter shares, um, but I'm hoping for something on the long term for Twitter. Just like, you know, with Meta and stuff like that, I plan on be buying Facebook a little bit down the road once all this, I want the market to pretty much crash, right? Uh, I think everything's overvalued. I think we need to go down a lot more. I'm hoping for recession-like prices sometime later on in the year. That's when I'm gonna start buying he more heavily and until that really happens with the stock market, I'm just uh, buying small things like Robinhood or things that I see are undervalued, a lot of cloud software companies, things like that. Uh, but yeah, so that's kind of where Bitcoin is at the moment. We'll kind of do uh, one last thing here where we talk about all the coins uh, on you know our little watch list here. Uh, there are more, but you know there's only so many I can talk about. But I mean, watch that ascending triangle video. Maybe I'll try to make an easier one because I did mess up the, the formatting of it a little bit. But it's always it's usually a trap when they try to suck you into buying back up here, and then all of a sudden it dumps because this gives this is this gives you hope. This gives you hope, and when you have hope, you you do stupid stuff, and then that hope is crushed. 
um, by people like me who know to short at these exact positions, right? And that's why I made that video about it. Uh, I will make a better thumbnail for it eventually as well. But okay, um, let's get this going here. Let's move this over here. Let's go to the daily chart. Um, for now, let's talk, let's talk about Ethereum. We did talk about how Ethereum was going to have a stronger move down than uh, Bitcoin. And it's, it's stuck at 2% more right now. And, and the pure fact of us talking about that was it had further, it had more, um, it had a longer distance until it would hit support. And it did end up hitting around those support levels here. It's almost to the 50 day moving average. Um, give this a few more days and Ethereum might have another real bad day here. So uh, be careful of Ethereum. Hopefully it can like hold on to support right here. A lot of that's going to be about what Bitcoin does over the next few days on this Fibonacci level. Um, so we, remember, the day candles right now aren't too much of a concern for us. The weekly candles are showing the real strong move that we might be coming down. Okay, So we might bounce off of here for a little bit before ultimately making that move down. So keep an eye out for Ethereum. I know a couple of you guys actually shorted Ethereum and made some good money off of it. So congrats to you guys on uh, trading the breakdown. Uh, of course, uh, Ethereum broke down actually a while ago, way before Bitcoin did. And we saw that, hey, selling signal right there, even though it went up higher, if you sell right here after a nice gain, you don't have to worry about all this crap that comes after, right? All right, so Maddox at support, broke down below the 50 moving average a while ago. ADA at support, XRP at support. Luna broke down below the um, the 50 here. I opened up a short on this one when we broke off the same day as Bitcoin. My big thing about Luna is, Luna is like has so much upside, like. I still hold Luna long term in my long term portfolio, but in my short term portfolio, I am shorting the crap out of this because I've been wanting to short this all the way back here. I just thought we would break down over here and not have this this Bitcoin pump that we saw a few days ago. That Bitcoin pump was not something I first saw at all. I thought because of all the technicals, I thought we would have, we would have to come down, but I was wrong about that one. Um, and so, you know, I'm not perfect. But um, right now, we'll see. Um, you know, we are coming back down, unfortunately, now, but a little bit later than I thought. So right now, uh, Luna is something I'm shorting here. I'm going to be watching very closely because the next level of support is really not down until like 66 bucks or so. Maybe have one here like 76 is a little bit of a pit stop. But there's not really much support here because of how fast this thing likes to move. Um, and we got Sheeb. She broke down below its 50-day moving average here. Broke down below that support as well. Uh, Sheeb's kind of at a decent support way over here at 2311. Two, two, EOS breaking down now. Yeah. Ethereum Classic break at support. Ethereum Classic still has such a good opportunity to have a golden cross here, but I'm not entirely sure if it will. Dot breaking down below. It's 50-day moving average here. Yeah, STMX broke down a while ago, coming down a little bit more, unfortunately. What is it? Engine at support. Just going through the brief one here. FTM coming down. Oh, FTM came down hard. Wow. How? Oh, this is next. Let's see. Okay, so we have this one right here. Well, I'll be watching FTM. FTM may not be a good one to short here. ICP about to go back towards all-time lows again, again. Um, I'm going to buy some of this eventually for a longer-term hold. I told you guys I didn't buy it, this one just because I, I was too... Remember, I told you guys my heart wants Bitcoin to go up, but my brain thinks Bitcoin's going to come down when we were talking about that initial boost. Um, I didn't buy it because of that, and I'm thinking if this does come down below 10 bucks, I will buy some. But until then, um, I'm going to be very frugal when it comes to ICP. Link broke down again here, even though I had a good opportunity to break out a while ago. What do we have right here? Uh, I guess as far as Link's concerned, the only one thing you really should be looking at is right there. Breakdown today. Litecoin at support. Yeah, we'll see how that works out. Mana breaking down here. So yeah, everything went from looking really good to real bad in a heartbeat. I mean, it, it happened that fast. So XLM support. Yeah, old support levels and then Bitcoin. And then Gala's at, at support here as well. Yeah, all right. Kind of the gist of where everything's at. I wish things were a little bit better, but at least, you know, we saw this coming here. And so uh, because we saw it coming, we could at least prepare for it a little bit better, especially if you guys had your, um, if you guys had uh, any exchanges that allowed you to short, right? Shorting was crucial for this week because otherwise it was just not not a fun day or not not a fun week, excuse me. There we go here. Uh, let me put this back over here. I see two lines right there and another one, right? There we go. Now we can go over to the minute chart here for Bitcoin. And you can really see how it's just kind of bouncing off of that Fibonacci right there. Really, really close. All right. Come back to the 50 minute here. 
Oh, and then sorry, one last thing here before I start going off and answering your guys' questions, of course. Um, and remember, members get their questions answered first. So thank you guys, members, for staying with me during all the YouTube debacle stuff. Because I know I sent you the email saying your memberships were paused and everything. And when I got the email from um, YouTube today, they said my memberships were un unpaused or something like that. So they're, you know, they're back to normal. So thank you, everybody. Um, but last thing here, uh, as far as the Bitcoin weekly chart. We do have support right now. If you also go to the Fibonacci levels, or excuse me, uh, Ichimoku Cloud on the weekly chart, look at that. Remember, for the past few uh, months, it actually held up pretty strong for us. Look at that. Hold, 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 hold. We tried, We did break out of it here. That was another fake breakout after the last daily break, fake breakout that we had. Um, two bad signs right there. Uh, came back down, and now we're about we're testing at the, the lower end of the Ichimoku Cloud right now. So be aware of that. Um, the only other thing I think I might have to show you guys as far as technicals here, because normally I stream at six o'clock, so this is gonna be kind of a um, kind of a midday stream, if you will. Um, do I have it right here? This is the basic one. Yeah, if we go back down to the lows over here, I think I should have more of them though, shouldn't I? Uh, no. It's just, okay, whatever. It's fine. Uh, it applied it to the same one. I guess I deleted it on some of my work by accident. I'll redo it later on. But if you're just looking at these basic GAN fans right here, these ones right here, it looks like it'll try to bring us back down to like 34,000 over the next couple months or so. So uh, not even months, just the next couple weeks. But So we'll, we'll keep an eye on it though. I hope it's not too bad. And last but not uh, least here, if I can get a 20, oh, there's no moving averages here. Okay, it doesn't matter. Um, leave. <clears throat> Look at the monthly chart here. All of a sudden, we're back to the freaking 20-month moving average, which we've been trying so hard not to break down below. And we talked about how the worst thing we would really want to have happen here is a little hump, then ultimately a, a crash, because this crash might take us down. Like, this could be a really bad April, like a really bad 20 days here. I don't want it to, but usually when we break down below the 20-month moving average, last thing, guys, I promise, uh, we have a pretty bad time. Last time we broke down it here, um, from uh, from open to close, you know, it was like 54% loss for Bitcoin. Um, this one, it actually wasn't too bad here. It was a bad month, like that took us 5% down. And then the following month, then we dropped down like 44%. So uh, I, I would really hope that no matter how bad things go, by the end of the month, I really want to still be above this 200, or this, excuse me, this 20 uh, month moving average here. I know that's going to be hard because of the, the, the death cross here on the weekly charts, but it, it it's it's been a pain right now, guys. <laughs> I want to I wanna, uh, be optimistic and be very happy. And there are opportunities for us to be optimistic, but right now it just seems like no matter how uh, the whales try to pump us up, the shorts still have a little more power in their, uh, their arsenal right now. But okay. Uh, back to the one minute here. Let's get off the one second. Let's see. So we're going to see if this manages to, oh, wow. Yeah, we got rejected hard not even from that 20. Oh, never mind. So much for that opportunity to buy there. Uh, they're still trying to bring us down. All right, let me put that back up there. Right. And of course the RSI is nice and low. It would signal we're oversold, but you got to be careful with that in the crypto space. So yeah. They're bringing us down uh, some more, unfortunately. Uh, we'll see how this kind of pans out. Hopefully, we just kind of stick down here for a little bit, but we can still manage to hold on some of these longer candles, then bounce up. But again, kind of anybody's game right now. We just broke down a few days ago. We're still kind of in the middle of that um, that, that downward pressure. But okay, everybody. Let, let's see what we can do here. Uh, hey, Ellen Time. Hey, Justin. Let's see. What did they say was causing the issue? They had no idea what caused the issue. As far as I know, I, I'm not going to press them on it because I, I know it was a rough situation for YouTube too. Because I, 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 I just, I pretty much just like went full, played every single card I had on the table. I was like, dude, help me out, please, guys. Like, this is absolutely insane. And they did. Um, they didn't tell me what, what happened, what went wrong. I, I didn't press them on it. All I know, it was a, it was a mistake. And because they have so many different accounts to, to manage, like, you know, tons of other YouTubers out there, they weren't able to help me out as much as they might have wanted to. All right, so that was the big thing irking me, but it's okay. Everything's fixed. We're back on track now. I, uh, now that the channel is making money again, I can keep on investing in all this crazy stuff as far as YouTube's concerned, and I'll, I'll be happy with it. I'm not even going to talk about this problem that much more over the next couple of days unless people ask me about it. 
I'm fine with what YouTube did now. I'm fine, happy, move on. I'm just happy that I had other YouTubers out there, like the larger crypto YouTubers, that um, that were giving me support from the background. It, the background support was really, what was really crucial here. Uh, because they don't want to anger YouTube any more than I do, right? <laughs> right? YouTube could turn off my channel just like that if I did something they deemed unworthy, and they they tried to, right? But it, it was a glitch, so that that's that's good to see. Uh, hey Cassandra, hey Kilo, happy birthday, Michael's mom. She had a fantastic birthday. Uh, let's see. And hey Justin, I just uh, I know that you guys are talking about this. Um, I, I'm getting about, I'm getting caught up on the comments, but. If you have a question about any uh, crypto coin in particular, let me know. I know I know I just went through the whole range of uh, coins there. Uh, let's see. And hey, Miss K, thank you very much. Let's see. And hey, Zacher. Uh, as far as reading the markets, a lot of what I do is the most basic, simple, like the most basic, simple technical analysis out there, because I think that's what works best in the crypto markets. Um, and you know, how do I say this? Like sometimes I'm wrong, but for the majority of the time I have been uh, pretty correct on these types of moves here. But again, it's off of the most basic technical analysis. You could try to go in a whole bunch of things like, uh, Colin over, um, uh, and, you know, the guy that says cryptoverse a lot, you know, uh, welcome to the back to cryptoverse. He, uh, was pretty strong about, um, he, I don't know. Say, um, you know, uh, according to his bull market band, which we, we've seen a little bit here as well, we were supposed to be back in a bull market and popping off, right? Um, I was a little more hesitant about it just because of basic technical analysis, which kind of irked me uh, because I, I don't like being out of the. I don't like being uh, out of the the. How would you even say that in a correct way? Um, you remember, guys, in November when Plan B was saying we're going to go like sky high with crypto. And I was that like one of the I was that, that bearish crypto guy saying I mean I understand what Plan B is saying I just don't see the technical supporting that and, and then all of a sudden we never actually hit like eighty six thousand dollars in, in November or something like that it, it's that type of stuff is, is comes from my basic technical analysis here so if you wanted to learn more about technical analysis I I would encourage you guys, I have a couple books down below I would encourage you to read uh, they're, they're not mine they're just you know uh, from Amazon but. You want to understand basic patterns. That's really where all of this comes down to. You add moving averages to it. You add Fibonacci levels, GAN fans, GAN boxes, uh, you know, retracement levels, RSI, oscillators. You can add all that stuff. But at the end of the day, if you ask me, it really all does start with just basic patterns and understanding what you're looking for as far as patterns are concerned. Okay, and then. It, it, that you'll make more money if you swing the crypto, swing stocks, whatever, rather than trying to do day trading. Once you understand how to swing trade, then you can move on to day trading and, and you'll be much more successful about it because you're not going to be as stressed all the time. Um, so a good example of this is maybe, um, oh, getting pushing us down here a little bit more, are they? Um, let me find an image I can pull up for you here very fast. Um, not the monthly ones. Media patterns. There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. So I'm gonna pop this up very fast. Oh, geez, they made it massive. Okay, that's just cool. And there. Oh, we're getting shorted. Um. There you go. Well, see, I could have held on to my shorts a little bit longer. Could have held on to them a little bit longer. Uh, but of course I walk away with a bunch of profit. I also had 125 X leverage position short. So I wanted to lock in that profit because you don't know how risky it really is to trade with 125 X leverage. It is terrifying, terrifyingly fun. Uh, mostly because it was a clear breakdown, right? Um, okay. But here, here are some patterns that you guys need to be aware of. Okay. Here are, here are like 20, they're basic. But we use these patterns all the time. And I mean like we use these patterns all the time. And the pattern that we used uh, this time was a, if I can find it right here, ascending triangle, second one from the right on the top, right? So uh, right there, ascending triangle. But instead of, uh, instead of breaking out, it broke down, okay? And because of that, we were we, we managed to uh, take a good, a short position on this and kind of ride the wave, uh, so to speak, going forward here. 
Um, a lot of trading is just these basic technicals and then understanding the situations of when they might be more bearish and more bullish. So, yeah, that's what's up for now. I'm not going to go into all of trading right now, but yeah. Um, read some books. I have a couple books down in my description if you want to check them out. They're like 20 bucks or so from Amazon. They're just like the dummy's guide to charting, the dummy's guide to technical analysis. Technical analysis is very simple in some respects, but the easiest way to do it is by um, swing trading first. Swing trading first, then going over to day trading. Don't try to day trade when you're not ready for it. And then what I would also tell you here very fast is, uh, well, while, while Bitcoin's kind of doing this short-term little bounce thing here, uh, if I go over here to my channel, and I think it should be underneath this channel as well. Let me actually just watch it here. So 71 people watching, thank you. Please make sure to give the stream a like. Um, so you see right here, I have the newsletter and then I have this thing right underneath it called free trading journal to edit, make a copy. Okay. Well, if I click on this right here and there's a guide underneath that too, if you want to read about how to use it, uh, you go to this one right here. Okay. Uh, Michael Whitman trading journal. You can rename it, but it, it, when you click on this originally, you won't be able to do any changes. You have to make a copy in order to edit the copy. You won't be able to edit this because this is what everybody else is going for. Um, but basically what this does here is this, this particular trading journal you will uh, write down all of your trades, all of your swing trades, the day, the day you buy them, the day you sell them, the ticker, uh, how many shares, whether there was leverage involved, if you know, you're know using crypto or futures, uh, the price target, your opening price, your stop loss, your closing price, profit loss, whatever, all that stuff. And then it will, it'll calculate how much your profit is lost. It'll calculate how much taxes you need to save up and how much your net profit was after that. And then it'll show you the um, your whether it was an ascending triangle or you're gonna choose from one of these patterns here. You're gonna choose from one of these patterns, okay? And then, what this does here is it tells you all the profit, tells you if you're making money, whatever. But on the second table, table here, the pivot boards, right now there's no data because it's a fresh page, right? But as you enter in stuff in here, it will actually tell you which patterns you're more successful uh, you more successful with and then which ones you really suck at, okay? And if you suck at a certain pattern, you suck at say, trading something in particular, well, what you need to understand there is you should only be paper trading that. And by paper trading, I mean you need to be practicing with fake money until you're good enough to be making money off of it consistently. So what I would aim for is maybe a 65% to 75% uh, win rate with these patterns in order to trade them on the market with real capital. If you're under 65%, 75%, then what I would say is, hey, understand that you still need some work and by, and by, and by paper trading, you're not spending money, you're not losing money in the market. It's okay to just have a little bit of a nest egg, a little bit of a pocket of cash you're not doing anything with and just right now, just leave it alone. You could put it in like a Voyager account and earn 9% yearly interest on it while you kind of trade or 0.0075% every month. And that'll help you out a lot, just leaving the money there. Meanwhile, you're practicing and you're becoming a better investor. So when the time comes when you actually want to put some capital behind these trades, then you're all you're going to be set, okay? So it mitigates all those potential losses because when I first started learning how to trade, I lost $5,000 pretty quickly by not knowing what the heck I was doing. So I wish I would have started paper trading a lot faster. And then you can kind of ease into the regular market, which will help you out a lot. And that goes for any of you guys who may not be making consistent profits just yet in the market. It's okay to just be like, whoa, guys, it, I'm fine here. I can, um, I can, uh, you know, I know I'm not making money in the market, but I'm learning so that when I do know what I'm doing here full time, right? Like you guys, um, you guys will have that capital over there that's been earning interest you can move it over and then you can start trading with small amounts because once you actually transition from paper trading for certain aspects to uh, you know, trading with real capital, you are going to notice that you do have a lot more emotional attachment because before you didn't feel like you were losing any money. Now when you're losing money before it actually goes green, right? You're gonna be like, oh geez, oh geez, what's happening, what's happening? It happens to everybody. Just be deal with it guys, it, it's part of the process here. But yeah, definitely use it. It's, I made it for you guys for free. I'm gonna start charging for it later on in the year. Uh, whenever Bitcoin uh, views pick back up, like when the channel is going to like a thousand views per video again. Until then, it's free for you guys that come in while the channel is kind of slower, of course. Take advantage of it because I don't know any other YouTuber that's giving this away for free. Uh, especially when it tells you what you suck at. All YouTubers for the most part try to teach you guys what you're good at. Uh, while that's okay, it's not nearly as good, if you ask me, uh, as telling you what you're good at and what you suck at. Because... Um, Unfortunately, I had the same problem as well. A lot of traders tend to be uh, confident that they know what they're doing, even if they're losing money. Like, oh, it's not my fault I lost money. It's the market's fault. And, you know, this kind of forces you to look in the mirror and say, wow, I suck at ascending triangles. I suck at uh, head and shoulders. I suck at, uh, you know, inverse head and shoulders, whatever. And, and um, 
it, it forces you to kind of confront yourself and be like, okay, well, I'm good at this and I'm bad at this. And if you choose to ignore the data of your own trades, you will most likely fail in the markets. And that goes for anybody, right? So trust the data. It's telling you what you're good at and it's telling you what you're bad at. Trust it, trust it, trust it. It'll save you a lot of uh, heartache in the future, especially if you guys are new to the um, the realm of crypto trading or just investing in stocks or you know options, whatever it may be. Keeping track of all of your trades in an organized way will be one of the crucial tool, uh, one of the crucial things you need to do in order to go full time in the markets. Um, and that's really the goal of this channel, right? Um, that that's my goal for you guys. And I kind of teach you guys here a little bit here, a little bit there. I'm working more on tutorials now, but my last two weeks have just been like complete craziness because YouTube demonetized my channel out of a mistake. And then I uh, now the mistake has been corrected, but now I got to do all that backup work to kind of fix it. Because um, like this channel had like 400 memberships before this happened uh now that now the memberships are down to like 98 or something like that like because they sent out that email scaring everybody the memberships plummeted so i'm doing a whole bunch of work on the back end and uh it's, it's just driving me nuts but uh what do you call take your time to get this trading journal i know one of you guys is already clicking on it right here anonymous skunk <laughs> i love the names they get google gives people um when you when you guys make a uh make a copy of it what do you call it? then you guys can start editing it yourself and it does help you guys out a lot like a really a lot here um, but okay, let's go back over here and see what's going on there. And hey, Aaron Green, happy to see you back as well to the Ruby level. Uh, what's right here? Bitcoin short of 9 million, that makes sense right there. And hey, Cassandra, oh, it looks like I lost a whole bunch of messages here. Okay, well, that's, some, that's not good. Um, let's see right here. Uh, let's see. Welcome back to YouTube's Good Graces. I know, right, Jay? Let's see. And hey, Aaron, let's see. My membership is gone. I didn't cancel, but it turned back on. Doesn't give me an option to become a member. Uh, oh, thank you. Aaron. Now I see you, Aaron. Yeah, I appreciate it, my man. Um, so how personally, how pers uh, how low do you personally think that the death cross will, uh, that happened will take us? Well, if we're going over history here and we do look at this death cross, um, the one thing that's been constant every single time Bitcoin has had this death cross, at least from the Coinbase charts that goes back into like 2014 or something like that, is... We do see that on the weekly charts, every time we have that death cross here, we tend to come back down to around the, this isn't the, this is the right one, uh, Coinbase one here. <clears throat> we tend to come down to the 200 weekly moving average. In case, this one actually went down way lower, way lower, right? Um, this one uh, came back down uh, to the 200 as well, but that if you look at it in hindsight, the 200 is definitely a place you could be buying, even if it does kind of come back down more, I would keep on buying and buying and buying, knowing that most likely it's gonna have a little bit more of a rebound. And remember, this was all within a week, so it, had, it had definitely had a crazy rebound after that initial drop. But yeah, so I would assume this time, because death cross, death cross, 200, 200, that we'd be coming back down to the 200 over the next few, um, either weeks or months, right? Because this one, it happened really fast, but this one, it kind of it kind of stagnated for a few months before we ultimately took that big dip down, right? Um, so what I think might happen here is if we are looking at that and we are, you know, you have this nice level of support from last summer's lows over here, you know, I think anywhere between 22,000, if it was going to have like a big nasty fall really fast, uh, more real, more realistically, I would say 24000 to $27,000. That's kind of a good buying range if you ask me. I will probably buy some coins down here though, just in case for whatever reason we don't actually make that plunge down there. Maybe we just stay around this major level of support of $28,000 or so, and then we have like a wick that comes down maybe to those levels. But I, I could see us coming down to that 200 weekly moving average again, just if it, even if it was just a tap. I will have limit orders placed down there. Well, I actually already do have a couple of limit orders placed down there in case for whatever reason we had something more of a flash crash event. But until that happens, you know, uh, it's going to be fun to day trade this and swing trade it. Right now, we're kind of uh, resting on the fruits of our shorts that we took on Friday or any of you guys that took the shorts with me on Friday. Um, but I, I would say, yeah, in, into the mid-20s at least, uh, maybe if we're luckier, just into the high 20s. But I'm gonna take that as an opportunity to load up on uh, Bitcoin uh, leverage positions. So like, I'll buy a couple thousand bucks of Bitcoin with 2x leverage, maybe 3x leverage, depending on how I feel about it. And then from there, I'll also be buying a bunch of altcoins with no leverage, so that as time goes on and we do pump back uh, back up after that potential crash, potential because we're not just not Tyler sure if it's gonna happen. Then I'll be able to make that quick profit, and like it'll be a monster profit pretty quickly. In which case, I'll probably scale off about 10 to 20 percent after the first two weeks. 
and then I will leave the rest of it for a while to see if we can actually have a larger move back up towards uh, 40,000 by then. Because what we're looking at now, because of this drop here, is now we have a whole other trend line here, right? Now we're in this descending triangle where we're hoping, hoping that maybe instead of coming all the way back down here, maybe we have an opportunity to break out there. Not as likely, but there, there's always an opportunity there, especially because we do have the short-term support right there, right? short-term support right there and of course we wanted if we wanted to use these technicals over here we could give ourselves a little bit of a little bit of a you know a break here but uh well actually let me just do this make my life a little bit easier yeah there you go so you know there's opportunities here there, there, there are but it's just like right now it's just like eh. with that death cross coming in and the fact that we had such a bullish indication that we were going to go up higher and at the same time we still managed to get slapped back down uh, you are going to see a lot of bulls and a lot of retail traders who don't really have much capital in the first place to keep on me buying the dip, buying the dip, buying the dip, like they did back when, uh, like they did back when they, um, back when they had the COVID relief funding and everybody was getting like unemployment checks and checks like off, you know, all types of free money, right? They can't toss the free money at it. This was a big part of this was caused by free money that the government just gave to everybody and it pumped up and pumped up the market like crazy. And then people start, you know, they're still getting unemployment, right? So a large part of that was retail traders just having a lot of funds available to have these uh, monster uh, returns, to cause these monster returns, excuse me. All right, but let's go back over here to the one. A little bit of a rebound here. It needs to cool off a little bit, it looks like. Okay, let's see. And then Cassandra, yeah, I'm glad my mom enjoyed her birthday as well. Uh, she felt bad about how much money it cost, but I was like, don't worry about the money. I, I gave the lady like a $50, $60 tip at the table because she was really nice. Like uh, at that restaurant, never once did our water get down below half a glass. We always had food on the table since the first plate came out. Uh, they gave her free f dessert for her birthday. They made accommodations because we took her in the wheelchair there because I don't want my mom walking in the Seattle Hills. Um, you know, so there, everything about them was perfect. The venue was noisy, but that that's not really something we cared about. It, um, you know, just fun to be out there and have a good time. And remember, uh, I don't have the I don't have my email open right now, but the pictures from that food place. Um, I I used to go here a lot. Um, but I'm look at that sashimi. Oh my gosh, so that was like shrimp. It's another type of fish. Another type of fish. Some scallops that were lightly seared in that thing. That was the best part. And some other type of fish. But that, that little bit of fish cost $50. <laughs> so my mom was like, why, why? She gave me that look exactly like, why are you paying that much for fish? And I was like, mom, I'm fine. She doesn't really, like, she doesn't understand how much money I make sometimes. Um, or that, like, I just don't use it. But she doesn't, because of COVID, she hasn't, we haven't been out together, like, uh, like out, like out and out. Because she's a uh, highly, whatever you call it, weak immune system, basically. She's on dialysis. Uh, I usually buy food for her and then, you know, like, kind of make it at home with high quality stuff. But she's not used to me actually taking her out um, like the last two years. She's like, oh, mostly because, you know, if you, if you guys went out to eat a lot, you guys will have noticed prices in the food industry have like skyrocketed over the last couple of years. My favorite food, my favorite place, Daniel's Broiler, they have a steak and lobster for 100 bucks or they used to. Um, now it costs 150 bucks. Like everything's getting more and more expensive here as we kind of uh, uh, continue this uh, inflationary environment. Oh, and guys, uh, right before, I see right underneath Aaron, it says, welcome to the Ruby level. And Nightbot put a message out there for the newsletter. If you guys want to sign up for the newsletter, definitely sign up for it. Uh, I think it's going to you guys' spam accounts right now. I'm going to try to work on that. But I know only like a handful of you guys opened up the newsletter from yesterday. I think because it, it might have uh, popped into your uh, spam, uh, spam email folder. So if you guys want to, I would... Um, I would check your spam folders because I give you guys three breakout opportunities this week if it does happen. Right now, it doesn't look like they are because of the market kind of coming back down. But again, we'll check them out later. And then we talked about um, how Bitcoin def uh, – well, if uh, the Bitcoin newsletter yesterday talked about how we were most likely going to come back down a little bit more because of that 50-day moving average and the fact that we just broke down. And, and of course, we have, right? Um, but the newsletter will come out every Sunday talking to, you, give, talking to you guys about any potential breakdowns or breakouts that I see coming. And if you guys wanted to trade them, kind of like the price targets I might be giving for, to you guys or just the, the, the buy-in prices and how long I may be looking to hold them, okay? But they were all usually, like, the, they're all going to be stuff that hasn't broken out yet. 
And if they do break out, how I'm going to play them. So don't buy them or don't trade them unless they actually have confirmed a breakout. Okay. There you go. And thank you for subscribing. I put up that new subscriber thing up there, and I like it so far. It's been pretty pretty darn nice to see people subscribing like that. Um, let's see. I just stopped looking at it for four hours, so hopefully we go up. There you go. That's always the, that's the trick. Bitcoin long, 13 million. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're going to try to... Uh, remember, this is a 15-minute chart. On the daily chart, they're going to try to have us hold this Fibonacci level right here so we can bounce up for a few more days before we ultimately uh, end up crashing back down here. Because if you look at the daily chart here, see, remember how we're at the base of the Fibonacci level for the weekly chart? We're also here for the the daily chart here. We're also at the Fibonacci level of support. The, the Ichimoku cloud support, excuse me. All right, so there is a lot of support here. You're going to see whales try to hold. I don't know if they're going to be able to, but they're trying to at least, um, which means is you know you can you can try to take a, a little bit of a day trade if you want to for like maybe one or two days. Um, j just be careful with it because, uh, you know, overall, we should still be coming down here a little bit more over the next uh, few weeks. But if you want to do is more of a day trade, yeah, definitely go for it. I mean, Bitcoin's down 5% on the day. Uh, you know, remember after we had this large fall after the, the 20 day moving average here, we came up a little bit, we came up a little bit here, uh, and then we eventually came back down, but we still did come up for one day to take a little bit of a breather. They, they're probably hoping for that type of, they're buying it right now for that type of breather, if you will. And they'll probably sell and it'll make the price go back down later on. Uh, let me go back over here. There we go. Uh, Hey Neil, I didn't think Doge was gonna cross under fourteen. Um, oh, let me see. Let me pull up Doge. I think I even, yeah, there we go. So Dogecoin broke down below its trend line here. Actually, what a few days ago, right? Oh no, it actually. This is a weird one. Uh, pretty much, I guess you would say it didn't really. It it never closed below it. This one might have been an indicator of that. Otherwise, but. It ran into resistance, it got knocked down, and now it's back on it down underneath 14 cents. Looking at Doge Corner right now, the next level of support is gonna be, well, where it's at now, actually about 13.79. But after that, it's gonna be the 50 day moving average, bringing us down to about 13 cents or so. So be careful if you're holding Doge still, it may have a little bit of pain there for you. If you, I'm talking about if you're swinging it, I still have a long-term Doge position, but if you're swinging it, be careful. It did have a nice pump, but remember, there's a reason why when I give you guys those thumbnails on my channel, I or, and when we talk about Doge Corner, even though we're always excited about Dogecoin when it pops, we do have this basic realization that over the last few months, every time Dogecoin pops, right, we do see um, right here, uh, breakout incoming pop, and then drop. So when the breakout happens, it's awesome. But just remember that a lot, like more times than not, uh, Dogecoin does come back down after the pop. So just, um, you know, un un understand that. Um, but yeah. We're hoping for the best for Dogecoin. It might have come down a little bit more over the next few weeks, especially if Bitcoin does continue some bit of a downtrend. But over in the long term, I'm not too concerned about it. I know Elon's still holding it, and he's going to do some magic with it. I'm banking my investment off of Elon, as well as the fact that Dogecoin still is, a, a, I don't know what you want to call it, very much in people's minds, if you will. A lot of people are salty about it also, but usually if people are salty about something, if it keeps on going up and running up, they're going to buy back in and be like, oh, I never said any of that bad stuff about Dogecoin, etc. right? Uh, FOMO is a crazy drug that <laughs> infects a lot of people in the marketplace. FOMO, FOMO, FOMO. And you saw FOMO with Dogecoin just last week. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. And hey, Tanya, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I haven't been out in a while as well, but Seattle Seattle has some good dining places. Uh, my favorite sushi places in Seattle are Umi Sake House and um, uh, Shiro's Sushi. Shiro's is a little bit harder to get into, uh, but really, really good sushi at Shiro's and uh, Umi Sake House. When is Bitcoin going to act like an inflation hedge? It's not going to act like an, an inflation hedge for a while here. I mean, if you want Bitcoin to be more of an inflation hedge, what you're going to have to do is do a longer term investment with Bitcoin. So I own Bitcoin for the long term because I believe my money is safer as a, you know, when it's in Bitcoin form rather than, you know, fiat USD or whatever other currency out there. Because if you guys look at inflation and see how much the US dollar is going down, the worth of US dollar, it's continuing to go down and down and down. But when you put it up to a graph showing how Bitcoin is growing year over year, I'm still pretty, I, I, Bitcoin is the clear winner for me. The American dollar is never going to become deflationary. It, it's just not going to. It's not designed to. 
And I think Bitcoin um, years from now will go into the hundreds and hun like hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars and maybe in, in the future like a million of dollars, right? Um, and that's why I own like three Bitcoin, right? Um, and I, even though Bitcoin is down 5% today or like 10, 15% over the last couple, like week or so, I'm not selling my long-term Bitcoin because I know those Bitcoin are going to do wonders for me down the road. But right now, you got to deal with the pains and ebbs of the markets. But if you wanted to, like, you know, if you wanted to get the most out of Bitcoin, the most out of Bitcoin you possibly could, it would be to buy it and hold it for a long-term period of time. But you would have to do that with money you're okay with not having any at your disposal, disposal for years, potentially decades, depending on how much you want to, like, reap, you know, how much uh, income you want off of it. Um, but I don't think it's going to be in, in, uh, inflationary for a while. Like, if I could find a chart for you guys here. Um, Oh, value of the dollar. Oracle. No, that's not it. I was looking for a specific chart here, but I don't think I'm going to be able to find it. Um, one that just shows that the value of the dollar has been going down for a long time here, and we're not going to have any, uh, we're not going to have any luck of trying to change that. Like, remember, there used to be a dollar menu at McDonald's, there used to be a dollar menu at all those places, but because of rising wages, because people wanted to get paid more, the, the companies passed on those um, expenses over to the consumer to help mitigate those losses, right? So, as we kind of go through this cycle over and over again, we're, we are unfortunately going to uh, have more and more inflation in the long run and the value of the dollar is going to get worse and worse. Um, but in those circumstances, right, that's why you have to be able to invest in things that are moving at a faster rate than the dollar, right, which isn't too hard. Um, but again, that's one of the, well, that's not one of the reasons really, but, uh, you know, when I move down to Belize next year and I go and get my tropical beach house, I understand that, uh, you know, I'm going to buy a plot of land first before I, when I get down there. I'm not going to build a house on it until I feel like I the the well the lumber shortage is kind of back under control, and, and then once that happens, I'm going to have a custom house designed for me and all that good stuff. But I understand like uh, I'm having a lot of my money right now, a lot of my savings in specific crypto portfolios uh, that give me interest in stable coins because that's much better than putting it into a savings account. So maybe if you don't want to open yourself up to the market risk, like you know Bitcoin's going down, obviously, um, you could always put your money in those type of accounts. So. I have a link for Voyager down below if you wanted to try them out. They have 9% yearly interest on USDT, nine or USDC, excuse me, 9% yearly interest. And it compounds every single month at 0.0075%. So, you know, it, it's a great way for you guys to just pop your money in there, let it earn interest in the background while you're doing your main trading or your main, you know, your job and everything like that. And it, it, it's just a much smart, smarter way than trying to just leave them in the bank right now because inflation is going to eat us alive. Um, but the inflation number should be coming out this week, I think. Uh, so we'll see how bad it is. I'm hoping it slows down a little bit because of the um, because of how oil price has been slumping a little bit. Hey, no tacos, no life. Let's see, Doge's life that it is. I just got on, but I got the email saying memberships were reinstated. I'm so happy your channel got fixed. Thank you, Courtney. I appreciate it. I was really really excited about that as well today. I woke up to it. I woke up late this morning because I had a long night, you know, driving back from Seattle and stuff like that. Um, but man, it, it, I'm just happy the channel got fixed because they sent me, um, where is it at? Uh, YouTube support. Uh, uh, get it. Get it. Get, I don't know where it's at, but they sent me an email this morning. Maybe it's a different email account saying, um, how was Ume Socket House? Oh, it was good. Okay. Uh, okay. Maybe a different email. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. But yeah, your mem your channel memberships have been unpaused. And then it said um, below that YouTube. Uh, yeah. This is 8.59 a.m. What the heck? 8.59. That's today. 8.59. 8.59. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Congratulations. Your YouTube channel, Mike Woman, has been accepted into the YouTube partner program and is now able to be monetized. So it's back. We're fine. I'm happy. But man, that was way more stressful than I needed it to be. Way more stressful. But I'm happy everything's back right now, and I'm uh, I'm excited about it. 
and see. And hey, Robbie, what should you do now? Enter that 42K. Uh, well, it depends on what your stop loss was at. So uh, the, the way we were trading it over the last few days is we saw the breakdown occur off of the ascending triangle. And we assumed that because it broke down from that, uh, the shorts were going to bring it back down below the uh, below the 50-day moving average for, and uh, you kind of tank us down a little bit, which has come true. But if you did take a position up there, you're going to sell wherever your stop loss was at. If you didn't have a stop loss, uh, I mean, that's a rough one. It really is, do you feel like you've lost enough money where you might want to just be like, hey, I need to cut my losses and kind of figure this out again? Or do you want to hope that there's a short-term rebound or a big rebound to make your make your losses back? Right now, uh, I can't tell you what to do because I'm not a financial advisor. All that stuff I always tell you guys as far as giving telling you guys what to do. But um, what I would advise you to do going forward is to have a stop loss there. Um, if you want to trade crypto, I have a link down below for BitGit. Use them. They have a really good stop loss system. So what that means is... Uh, if you bought Bitcoin at forty-two thousand, but you only wanted to like you know you you only wanted to uh, play with it until it hit like forty-one thousand, whenever it hit forty-one thousand and you lost a little bit of money, it would automatically sell your position, protecting you from all the losses that came in after that, right? So that that's why it's crucial to have a stop loss, and that's why when I give you guys this trading journal here where I talk about everything, you guys will have a place to put your stop losses here. So down the road you know if you have a stop loss here at least in the crypto realm not in the stock realm because you could have a gap down of course but as far as stocks are concerned uh or excuse me crypto is concerned if the price tanks and your stop loss is this right here well i don't know like 100 bucks something like that and your opening price was 200 bucks uh, i don't know 110 101 dollars whatever uh if your closing price uh your closing price should not be below 100 dollars because that stop loss was there to protect you it mitigates your losses. That That's why it's there. It's there to protect you. So use a stop loss. It's very, very crucial that you guys use stop losses. Like very, very crucial that you guys use stop losses. Because uh, if you don't, then you're opening yourself up to major moves down and you know, you're know kind of becoming a bag holder afterwards, right? Yeah, this right here. And hey, Rico. Um, you can start nibbling into crypto if you wanted to right now. I think most people are probably going to be waiting uh, for a larger breakout before buying in large amounts of uh, crypto uh, currencies here. Because um, right now we're, we are at a deep couple of a good level of support as far as the daily, weekly candles are concerned. We are at a good level of support. So if you wanted to buy for a short term move, you could definitely take that, that opportunity there. Just be careful because like going up the next few weeks, we should be coming back down a little bit more here. Um, if we continue to break down below this Fibonacci level, if we continue to break down below the Fibonacci level. Let's see. Hey, Juan. Yeah, I, I'm re I, I reset the stream. It should already be back on right now as far as I know. Um, yeah, the Dogecoin stream is already up. Yeah, it's, Dogecoin, Dogecoin stream is already up. Uh, let's see. Do I think the Ruple might beat the dollar? I, I doubt it. Uh, the the Russian ruble? No, no, I don't think that's going to beat the the U.S. dollar. Um, the only thing going for them right now is I think they put they attached it to the gold standard or something like that. So that might be kind of interesting. But as far as the ruble, no, no. Russia's economy is going to be a freaking tatters after all this is said and done. Um, we'll see how it all works out. But yeah, it, it's not looking so good uh, for them. As as not, I mean, there there's an initial there's an initial cost to what Russia did as far as their economy is concerned. But there's going to be longer term issues with them because what they did is they nationalized a lot of the, the, the businesses that left out of uh, protest, right? So they don't have McDonald's anymore. They have another version of McDonald's. Well, if you're another corporation looking to put your franchises there, are you really going to take that risk knowing that if there's another war, uh, you know, local pressure at home is going to make you have to pull out of that. And then they're going to take over all of your investments. All that money that you put down there is all going to be gone. Right, so Russia is going to be in a pain for a while. The ripple is going to be in pain for a while longer, uh, especially if they continue to escalate the war. I don't see this war ending anytime soon. I, I mean, not in like a week or so. I mean, this has been just like a drawn out mess because Russia does not have a real capable military. It turns out, uh, all my life I thought Russia had a very strong, formidable military. That's everything I learned in school was Russia has a strong power. They may not have a strong economy, but they got a big military and a bunch of nukes. Right. Well, turns out they got a bunch of nukes. The military is trash. I mean, just absolute trash, 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 trash. Um, and I think that's embarrassing for Putin on many, many levels here, right? 
And so I think he's going to continue to escalate until he gets some type of win out of it. And then when he gets a win, then he'll like frame it to his own people saying we succeeded and everything like that. But then the economy and the ruble will still be in a much worse off position for years, decades to come. Nobody's going to trust Putin after this. He's a freaking... He miscalculated. And normally he's not the type of guy that does miscalculate. So uh, it is a weird thing to see him going through that. And hey, Crypto Hash. Yeah, I'm streaming early for a little bit. I'm about to hop off the stream here actually in a few seconds. Um, but I just want to let people know about what's going on with crypto so they can watch it later on or not. But yeah, definitely in a picky situation. I will be going live at, uh, well, since I'm uh, probably 7 o'clock tonight, 7 o'clock tonight Pacific time. And we'll talk about m more of this stuff here. But I wanted to make sure you guys had a good idea of what's going on here, why this is happening. And uh, explain that I sold off my short positions just uh, before this stream started. It, did ha it has come down a little bit more since I started streaming. Um, but I, I'm perfectly fine with that. Um, and then you're kind of reiterating, this is why I tell you guys when we break down, it's okay to start selling off. Because as far as crypto is concerned, remember, we broke down Friday and I was like, hey everybody, we broke down, I have officially opened up some short positions and then I will let you guys know, how, I, will, I will let you guys know if they made me any good money come uh, Monday. And you know, I was just like, I can't, like, I'm not going to stream Sunday because I'm going to take my mom out to dinner and all that good stuff. But, we can see it was a couple days of doing nothing, but ultimately we came down pretty hard, right? And this is where I made all my money. I'm happy. I'm excited. Boom. Nice, easy breakdown. You open up a short, like, you know, normal stuff. The one thing that was a concern, and I think this was because a lot of people um, didn't watch my video, um, if I can find it again. I, I, I'm i going to put out more tutorials for you guys. I've been kind of busy lately, um, but I put out a video a while ago, and it's called... Um, the ascending triangle. What is it? and How to trade it? I'll, I'll change the name up too here, please, friends. But it's a long, twenty-five minute video. But what I reiterated here, it's at the same time point as earlier. Remember, you see this. There's two ways a breakdown can happen off of off of an ascending triangle. The first one is it just tanks right afterwards. That's not what happened this time. The second one, which I talked about here, was is it moved back up to test out again, and then that's where it gets shorted down heavily. And that's what we saw looking at Bitcoin prices here. Because if we go to the fifteen minute chart back again. And then we see, look at, we broke down, we came back up to test it, and then ultimately we got slammed. You see what shorts took advantage of at that exact point. And it happens more than you think. And you can use the same strategy if we would have broken out, right? So, um, where was that level here? Um, back when Bitcoin broke out way over here, if I can get it over there. This is way too hard. Oh, there you go. Okay. When Bitcoin broke out hard over here and above this, uh, what a Fibonacci level broke out, came back down. You could have bought in right around here and ultimately still made some uh, profit off of it, even though overall what was blocking us wasn't really um, a Fibonacci level or anything like that. Um, in fact, actually, I don't know if this was a good enough example for show that. Forget what I just said here. This wasn't a good example off of a breakout. Um, but. What was really stopping us here was the 200 moving average, right? So 200 daily. And it's that white. Oh, let me change the color of it so you guys can see a little bit better. That 200 daily moving average was definitely a pain. And that's kind of why I talked about the, the different moving averages going forward. And how, you know, even though we, we, we talk about what it would, we talk about the simple moving average on this channel, the, the exponential moving average, the double exponential moving average, and the triple exponential moving average, the team I hear. So before I head off here for the day, guys, let me show you guys this uh, tutorial for channel. So we broke down officially from this one, but we had already broken down below on the, uh, the EMA, right? The 50 EMA. We already broke down a long time ago from the DEMA way back over here. And we were already broken down below it over here, way back over here with the Tima, right? So first first alarm went off on the Tima, breaking down below the 50. Then we haven't even been able to break back above the 20 here. We have all the death crosses happening here. We have death crosses about to happen here. Uh, you know, death cross may happen over here, but we're still gladly uh, below the 200. So that's not going to be too much of a more of a death cross there. But, um, you know, you got to be aware of those those little things going forward, right? It's, it's always a little bit of a pain to uh, keep all this stuff uh, organized. 
which is why I tell you guys, uh, if you guys do have a trading view account, if you go over here to manage layouts, you can see my mouse up here in the, the top corner-ish area. Go down and do new chart layout, and that way you can actually just order chart, uh, a layout where you just have different moving averages, or one where you just have Fibonacci levels, or one where you just have Ganfan levels, or you know it keeps everything a little bit more organized. Otherwise, you I mean, you, you have the charts that look like mine, which are these, where um, where they're like there's so much clutter all over the place, and it's like okay, what can we see, right? Because well, there, there are good things and bad things about having a cluttered screen, but as far as the streams are concerned, it's not a good thing for me to have all this crap <laughs> off my screen. Um, like, you know, looking back at this today, you know, we had two Fibonacci levels right here. We had this uh, little GAN fan level right here. But looking back on it historically, this GAN fan level hasn't really been too much of a support level for us, right? And so look at it. Broke down below it, broke back above it, held support there, uh, broke down below it. Resistance, resistance, broke out. So it's, it's had a little bit of an impact, but not much as far as the realms of support, if you ask me. Um, but now going forward, you know, um, now we're going to be looking at the next Ganfren level, which is probably all the way, Jesus, all the way down here, really? Hmm, 34,000? Hopefully don't come down that, that far. Um, but yeah, we got trend lines and other stuff before that. But yeah, if you don't like to have this type of cluttered mess on your, your screen, right? Here's the Ganfren. That's the resistance we're facing right now. And you can see we're already getting rejected from the GAN fan level. Um, so, you know, it's nice to have it in certain respects. But man, it's, uh, you know, it, it's okay to have everything kind of organized and kind of split apart, if you will. And you can have one chart if you wanted to being that main level. But you can see it's important. The GAN, it, it's an important GAN fan level. And in, in the long, you know, in the, in the terms of a whole day candle, not really too much. But you see the daily things right here. This would have been a good entry point to start shorting again as we uh, found some resistance up here. That type of stuff, right? Uh, and, you know, my GAN fan levels could always be a little bit off here. So if we adjusted it, maybe it looks more accurate. But you guys get the gist of what I'm saying here. The gist of what I'm saying. Let's see. And hey, Cracker Belly. Uh, hey, Mike, glad YouTube stopped hating on you. Thank you very much. I am glad they're not hating on me as much right now as well. It has definitely been a pain of a month to deal with, or pain of two weeks to deal with this. But um, I, I am happy to say that, you know, they got everything fixed up here. I mean, like, look at this. Um, definitely a lot of stuff going on here uh, right now. Here's the back to the minute chart. A little bit more rebound, testing out again before making up. Oh, there, there was the dump I was going to say was going to happen, but it happened at the same time. Um, but yeah, and there we go, right? And now Bitcoin is down about six percent in the last uh, few hours, or uh, since you know yesterday at six p.m. So. Still going to be a rough time going forward. I'll, I'll stay on the chat. I'll stay on the stream here for a little bit longer, guys. I feel like this is just going to take a, a minute <laughs> longer. Um, but you are seeing a Bitcoin continually getting slammed down here. And what we're back down to 6%, 6.13. Yeah. You are seeing shorts take full advantage of this nastiness we're seeing in the market. And as far as the stock market's concerned, it's kind of stayed uh, unch. Uh, oh, no, we have a little bit more of a downtrend as the, 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 the end of the day has actually been coming along. Yeah. So... Let me do one thing here. Everything's done. Not not one thing today is in the green. Not one sector. Industrials aren't too bad, and consumer defensive isn't bad. So if you guys are looking for some longer term returns, I think uh, financials, consumer defensive, and industrials are going to be your golden gold, uh, sweet spot. Um, energy is bad because oil is going down today. But technology and healthcare, be careful of those plays as they do slowly start losing out on some uh, some funding. See. Hey, yeah, man, Russia is just embarrassing themselves. If we let loose a larger battalion or two, they get smoked. Yeah, but they got nukes, and that's the real big issue. If if there were no nukes in the world, Russia would just be like it's getting slammed by the world, right? But yeah, it's uh, definitely a, a, um, a, a problem for the world and problem for Russia going forward. Um, let's see. Can you recommend some limit order entry points on some best blue chips, please? What what I would say for those blue chips is I don't have the time to do every all all those orders and stuff like that. But um, what I traditionally do is I wait for some type of bullish indicator before buying uh, indication before buying into altcoins. So when I'm doing like low market cap uh, coins that are under five hundred million dollar market cap, I usually buy those for long term holds. But but for stuff like a a Bitcoin or an Ethereum or uh, a Matic. Uh, XRP, whatever, you know, uh, EOS, Ethereum Classic, whatever, DOT, STMX. What I like to do for those in particular is I like to 
move this down here a little bit. Um, I like to buy them when, when they have a breakout on a pattern. That's number one type of thing, uh, reason I like to buy them. Or if I see something like a golden cross occurring on the 20 and the 50 half of a major downturn where Bitcoin looks like it can it has an opportunity to move up higher. That's usually when I load up on altcoins. It's not really a, a set level. Like I, I don't like to buy altcoins too much on support levels because usually they can continue to break down below support because of uh, Bitcoin being the way it is. Bitcoin controls the majority of the altcoin market, right? So what, what I would say here is what kind of read or what I just said already, but if you can wait until there's a nice breakout on altcoin, then you can buy it. It may lag for a few days because it's going to be waiting for Bitcoin. But usually you, you might see the altcoin markets actually moving up a little bit more before uh, before Bitcoin really takes a surge, which is, which is actually what you saw over the past few weeks here. All right. I think we've calmed down a little bit more. It wasn't it wasn't too big of a drop right there. I mean, it looked like it, but it wasn't too bad. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna hop on guys in another like six seven hours here. I'll start streaming again at seven p.m. Pacific time. We'll kind of let this kind of uh, cool down here a little bit. Then we'll talk about more about what what we can see happening here as far as crypto is concerned in the future. Uh, but right now, understand you know we saw this coming. If you guys were prepared, awesome. If you guys didn't do the you know trade on the breakout, it's fine. We, you know we can always do it again later on. Sorry. I got C seventeen jets flying over my house. They must be doing exercises. Um, but that, that's that's the basic gist of what I wanted you guys to know so far today because I did see this little crash thing coming, and uh, we ran a poll last uh, last Friday talking about are we going to break down below the fifty day moving average? And I think like seventy of you guys said yes, thirty percent said no. So I think a lot of you guys saw this coming off of all the stuff I've been kind of teaching you guys about since last year, uh, and I'm happy to see that you guys uh, were able to make some money off of those plays. But okay. Hey, Rybred. And yeah, hope you guys all have a fantastic rest of your uh, day. And I'll be live again at 7 p.m. to kind of talking about today's day candle and uh, at where we closed at. That kind of gave me, gave me a little bit more information on where we might be going over the next few days here, okay? Thanks, everybody. And have a great, great rest of your day. Keep your stop losses and sign up for the newsletter down in the description below. I'll give you guys some good breakout plays for free. Thanks, everybody.